Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends podcast. With me today is my good friend Carly O'Donoghue, and this is our monthly book review. And Carly, what? Oh, how are you doing today, Carly? Yeah. By the way? Oh, I'm good to be back this <laughs> month. Thanks, Tyson. Oh, before I just dive in about the book, yeah, and I should okay. ask how you're doing. Yeah, I'm going really well, thanks. So it's good to see you again. And today's book is, let's hold it up. It is titled, I'll let you say the name. This is Marketing. It is. By and it's Seth a, Godin. Yeah, good old Seth Godin. Godin, sorry. God, really? Well, so he, you, you, you could got be me God. to introduce the book and I got his name wrong. <laughs> oh, it could be Godin, but I think it's Godin. Godin, okay, Godin. Yeah. Sorry, Seth. Seth Godin. And we did one of Seth's, <laughs> one of Seth's books. The practice. Yes. I can't remember yes, which one was that. Back again. That he's was. Back again. Uh, that was way back. Oh, that was their first book review. How could we forget? So if you oh, missed their first book review, it was the practice by Seth Godin. It was book review number one in February. Well, this will be interesting, comparing his two books because they're very different books. This book, as the title says, this is marketing. To give you an idea, this is a marketing book. In case you're wondering. Yeah. And <laughs> it's. Yeah. The it's, word on uh, the street, it's all about marketing. Yeah. Oh, here we go. And it says under this, you can't be seen until you learn to see. He's Ooh. very cryptic, very cryptic man. There's a lot There's a lot of information in this book. And we were talking before about, you know, when we do book reviews, who are these books for? Mm. We can say that it's not for everybody, this book. Definitely uh, the not. book that we did last last book review, The One Thing, if you haven't listened to it, go and listen to it. That was a great review. And that book was actually for everybody. This is not. No. No. <laughs> no, we were talking about that off air that I said, if you are new to marketing, you've just set up your, your podiatry business and you're thinking, oh, yeah, okay, this book sounds really good. This is a this book, there's a lot of heavy lifting in it. It's There's a lot of stuff that you yeah. can actually implement those straight away in your day-to-day -day work life. And yeah. that's what we're going to unpack a little bit here. Pull bits and pieces out of the book of what you can possibly take take away into into your practice like right now. Oh, definitely. But there's there's definitely a lot of content in there. Yeah, and I suggest anyone if you if you've never read anything about marketing before, I'm not saying don't get the book because it is I I, I like the it book. is a good book. And I got it first as an audio book. Listen to the audio book. Enjoyed the audio book that much. I bought the book. But then when I went to read the book, I actually just, it was, it was hard to read. So then I played the audio book and just turned the pages and read it at the same time. Yeah, you know, I love, that's the first time I've heard about that, but I've, I love that idea. I love that concept. Um, granted, you don't fall asleep halfway through it because someone's reading to you and you fall asleep and then you miss, you miss half the book. You have to go back go back again and plus i put him at one and a half times speed because he reads or well, he talks quite slow and i read faster than he talks so i had to speed him up so i could actually follow through but every time we got to a certain point i went oh i like that i'd pause it i'd highlight those parts of the book write my own notes on the side then just uh, press play again so i've never done that before but i think if you get an audio book you love it do the right thing by the author and then go and buy the book and then if you go back and listen to it again while you're reading the book, I got so much more out of it. This is probably the third time okay. that I've actually gone through it then. Yeah. And we're saying there's a lot of content in it, but, you know, for, for the podiatrist who are listening, if you, if you thought you were only there to treat feet, well, let me tell you something. We're going to, we're going to probably knock your socks off in this episode. <laughs> Everybody markets themselves and every day you do it. So, whether you want to use the word marketing or not, we're going to tell you, you know, a bit about how you actually do that yourself without even knowing it and yeah. how you can do it better. Yeah. And I've always said that from the, t as soon as you open up your own business, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you are marketing your business, whether you think you are or not, you are actually marketing your business. And, and whether going, you want yeah. to admit it or not, because a lot of people <laughs> I know that, I say, oh, look, I, I don't market or I don't like marketing. I don't know anything about marketing. Now, every time, every time you have a conversation with somebody, every time you open your mouth to speak to a patient, you're actually marketing something. 
Yeah. Uh, whether you, you know, whether you believe it or not, that that that's a true concept. This is exactly what you're doing. And in my experience in business, business, this I agree with Seth wholeheartedly with this. The moment, the moment the podiatrist walks out into the waiting area and talks to a patient, they're actually marketing themselves. So the way that they look, the way mm. that they speak to the patient, their posture, it's all marketing to the patient. It's how you're presenting yourself. And that's that concept. You just change the wording. That's marketing. So you're marketing yourself. Your admin staff, a patient walks through the door. If they lift their head, smile to the patient, welcome the patient into the practice from the first couple of seconds they walk through the door, then the patient subconsciously goes, well, this is an awesome decision Mm. I've made to come in here. This is a great clinic. And so you've automatically market it and this is what this book is about it changes your thinking on the wording marketing into what you do actually every day without knowing it yeah it's true though it's i think people underestimate what marketing is they, they're just going to change the terminology if they don't like mm-hmm. the word marketing just come up with something it's how you present yourself to the public yeah and it's even when someone walks in your clinic how the clinic smells what they can hear conversations that are taking place there's every one of those things reflects on the business so when i've uh, you've done the 12 week reboot with me I have. Mm-hmm. so next one's in november if anyone's wondering go to my website tysonfranklin.com go and check it out and and it's gonna be a live one two-day live event which is gonna be fun in that remember when i said that you can do everything right you might be the best podiatrist going around, you're, you dress well, and all of a sudden you've had that patient who's walked into your clinic, they sit down, and you go, they don't like me. This, this, the, I can already tell they're not happy being here. In your eyes, you think you've done everything right, but you don't realise what your car park looks like, what your front entrance looks like. When they came in and sat down, what did they hear, see, smell? All these things could be putting them off before they've ever got in the treatment room with you. And that's why... I think the word you used is is best. It's how everything is presented to the patient Mm -hmm. in all aspects of your business is part of marketing. Yeah, and something that I go on a lot about or and and we've spoken together about is how you make that person feel. And marketing is all about how you make that person you're talking to feel. And so if you're in the clinic room and you're you're telling them about uh, treatment options. For, for their pain, guess what? That's actually marketing. You can you can call it something else, but in Seth's book, he calls it marketing. Mm. So you're marketing a certain way to get an outcome for the patient. And the patient has to believe in this marketing. Like when you um, advertise something in the paper or on social media, you're, you're portraying an outcome for a patient and they've got to believe that. So if you're talking to a patient in a clinic room and they're not buying what you're saying, you need to actually be very fluid in your marketing or be very fluid in what you're telling that person because you need to tell them in a certain way that they understand it and that they actually believe it. And if you can pivot like that in your treatment room and within your business, then there you're going to get that outcome that you want. But that, that, that's all marketing. So this book goes through little sections like that within the book to get you to change your thinking about the word marketing, but also the way that you present yourself to your patients every day and how you can get more from it. Because mm. we all do it, but if you are struggling some days to do it well, you only have to change maybe a point of view or put a different lens on and look at things differently and you'll get the outcome that you want. Yeah, but even even on the, because this book has a cover, you know, that a removable cover. <laughs> and I think there was one thing you wrote on here and it says, it's time to stop uh, confusing social media metrics with true connections, yeah. but also stop lying, spamming and feeling guilty about your work. Mm. And I think sometimes when people think marketing, they think they have to try and be tricky. They're trying to trick patients into coming into their business or they've seen another marketer do something and they go, oh, 
that is so obvious what they're doing. So I'll give you an example. I was on a webinar recently. It was a really, really good webinar. I really enjoyed it. And the presenter was great. Everything was fantastic. But then all of a sudden I get this email afterwards and it says, yeah, here's a copy of the recording. Great. You click on it and the copy of the recording wasn't a copy of the recording. It went to a sales page on their website that was trying to sell their latest program that's coming out. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the program, but that email was not a copy of their recording. But then you get another email three hours later. Oh, mistake. I accidentally sent you the wrong email or that email went out too early and didn't have the right link. I'm going, no, it didn't. Knowing that they might use Kajabi or one of those other programs, so it's all pre-programmed in, you can't make those mistakes. So those how mistakes, did that make you uh, feel when you when you did that? Because that's part of the whole marketing process as well. And even talking to people or, or getting rapport with people, how you, how you felt when you got that accidental email. How did I feel? I, I got those and I'm thinking, can everybody else see through the lie? Yeah. And I'm thinking if they can't see through the lie, then you're, then that person would be probably attracting a certain type of client that they're going to work with. Because I'm thinking yeah. if, if you can't see that, that was just, that was a setup to actually send you through to their sales page, then I'm thinking, it, and I think people see that and they go, oh, if that's what marketing is, I don't want to be part of that. Yeah, see, that's not marketing. But it creates a negativity in your mind. It creates a distrust. And that's not what you want for your practice. So marketing is is about being honest. It's not about being dishonest, but it's about doing things the, the right way. Um, now, a couple of points in, in this book. So yes, we'll we should, we should, of, we should dive in. into a couple. Yeah. <laughs> so Seth mentions that you need to get your strategy right, your long-term strategy, and you need to get your culture right. And your culture is your strategy. So what I think it's meaning as if, have you ever heard of the term drinking the same Kool-Aid, Tyson? Oh, You've yes. said it heaps of yeah. times before. Yeah. So you need to get people believing the same story. And you say that a lot, a lot of times with the Kool-Aid about the chiropractors. Hello oh, to all the chiropractors out there, but... Um, I don't mean that in a negative way towards chiropractors. I mean, it, I've never been to a chiropractic clinic where the receptionist at who greets you is not drinking the chiropractic Kool-Aid. Yeah. They are just 100%. They are all in. The chiropractor is all in. Everybody that works at a chiropractic clinic is usually all in. Yeah. No one no one is half asked about chiropractic there. They are in the Kool-Aid right from the start. And, and, that, and that's what we mean by the, the Kool-Aid. And that's how it should be. It's, it yeah. should be that. I'm like that with the business black ops that I go to. I'm drinking Dave Freeze Kool-Aid like the like <laughs> I'm a thirst. So we say that, but it's a positive thing. It's not a negative yeah. thing. And so I'm going to put out there, you know, I'm, I'm really big on quotes. So I'm going to give everybody another another Carly quote. Oh, a Carly quote. So this, this quote that I'm going to give you is directly... Um, related to that Kool-Aid. So it's be careful of the stories that you tell yourself. And so, you know, perception is reality. And for anybody who knows me, I keep saying that all the time. Perception's reality. What you perceive as true will be the reality that you live by. But that's the same thing as when you're marketing your clinic. What you, the stories you tell people about your clinic you want them believing your you want your staff believing that what you produce in your clinic is what you're um, what you're trying to market towards what you're trying to not as we we sell but the type of clinic that you are the advertising if you market to a large group of people most times that won't work yeah so you need to be really specific have a really specific Kool-Aid so it's a very, very small drink, but it's very powerful. So who are you actually marketing for or who are you marketing to? And get He, re he repeats that constantly all through constantly. the book. It's, it's yeah. all about who who are you marketing to and, rem and remembering that you're not for everyone. You're not for everybody, no. And that's important to remember that there might be 10,000 people in your area that potentially – could one day have a foot problem and come and see you. But right now, they're not all for you. 
so or, or you're not for them they're, they're going to see another podiatrist they're going to go to another health practitioner for something yes they could see you but you're not what they're looking for right at this moment yeah so when you when you're doing those marketing like stop looking for shortcuts for your business look for long-term viability um, and that long-term viability path is being really specific on on what you're about and who you want to help. And that's that's what we're talking about, the Kool-Aid. What type of Kool-Aid do you have for your practice? And that was the thing, our clinic, when we brought our mission statement right down or down to like three words, better before bigger. Mm-hmm. It's everything we did had to be, it was, it was better, you know, I'd rather have a better clinic than a bigger clinic. Yeah, Seth actually talks about that in the book, is marketing is better. So Mm. you're trying to make things better. You're trying to change things to make things better. So if someone has pain, you're trying to change something in their life to make them better in their life. So you're trying to get an outcome for them. And that believing in that change, believing that you can actually create that change in someone's life is making something better. Yeah. He gives an example of a coffee shop that, yeah, in Union Square Cafe in in New York City, but he was talking about a particular coffee shop and they worked out how many people could they serve a day. And they worked out that it's really, it was only 600 people that they could actually serve in any particular day. So therefore, what 600 people did they want to be serving? So if you think of your clinic and if you're a, a solo practitioner, you could probably only treat 15 to 20 people a day yourself depending yeah. which country you're in and, and how you do things but say say with 20 people a day is all you can treat a day and you work five days a week it means that you can only treat 100 people a week what 100 people do you want do you want the 100 people that re- respect what you do respect the prices that you charge don't look for discounts aren't wanting bulk billing or do you want to waste your time seeing people who are complaining about your fees, arguing with you about what you charge, they want to be bulk billed, they ask for accounts. It's it's really your choice. And that's what he's saying, work out what's your capacity and then who do you actually want to fill that capacity? Yeah. And so when you're advertising for those people, that's a really good point that you need to advertise towards that type of person. So Say there's three, you've got um, three different adverts from three different clinics and you're all advertising orthotics. You're all going to do it in a slightly different way, but you can't resonate with everybody. Mm. So how you actually market your your orthotic will actually resonate with the type of person that you want. So bringing it back to your your story, Tyson, that you know, if you only can see 100 people a and look through the lens of that person that you want to come into the clinic. What are they actually after? So if you're advertising, you're actually getting the wrong person. Maybe you're you're portraying the wrong message to that person. So pivot your advertising and then advertise the same thing, but in a different way. That was a quote. You like this quote? That yeah. ma- marketing, marketing amplifies what you already have. Yes. Yep, true. So if you're not like if you don't like the type of patients that you're currently seeing, then that is a reflection of the marketing that you're doing. So if you want yeah. to change the people that you're seeing, then you've got to change the way that you're actually doing things. And it's not saying that one patient is better than another patient. It, like you said, it's just perception. It is perception. And those in the treatment room, if you're not if you're talking to a patient and you're not getting the the conversion that you want, you're not getting the outcome for that patient. It may not be the skill levels you have. It may be the way that you're talking to the patient or the the way that you're portraying that that treatment pathway that's not they're not understanding. So don't think that you're not skilled enough for what you're doing. It's just how you're actually uh, presenting that that problem that you can solve for that patient. So really have a look at. And this is what we're saying, that this book is, it does give you things that you can take away and strategies straight away on your everyday work life. If you're coming to the clinic and, you know, you didn't brush your hair or you have your shirt <laughs> untucked, yeah, may, maybe have a look in the mirror and just see, look, if you were coming to see you, what would your opinion of you be if you could just see you 
from from the outside because they don't remember they don't know you patients that walk through the door they don't know you especially new patients obviously I'm talking about so what's their first perception of you and again have a look at the mirror would you want to be treated by yourself when you take them into the room and you're talking are you talking at a really fast pace that they can't understand or are you talking in a language that they don't understand so again it's not your skill level it's how you're actually presenting yourself and you know it's marketing you're marketing yourself so if you're not having that concept in your head you may not be getting the outcome that you deserve and that the patient deserves as well so it's just little tiny tweaks and again putting on a lens of what the patient actually sees then you might actually get get your result yeah and that's i think it's really important about what you said then about would would you believe yourself or would you want to yeah. be treated by yourself because i have seen some podiatrists they go oh yeah but i'm just it's just the way that i'm i'm just really casual and laid back and and i'm like yeah but most of your patients may not be mm. So if they're looking at you and you've got a T-shirt on, not well, it doesn't have to be a, like a button-up business shirt, but in a particular area, if you're in Melbourne City, I'm assuming you probably do wear a button-up business shirt, not a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. If you're in Cairns, you can get away with a polo shirt. So the patient might be laid back and casual. The patient might be country and walk in with like an Akubra hat or whatever, and that's great. But what service are they actually paying for? They're not paying for a casual service portraying it and that's what your clinic is fantastic then you've achieved your goal but if that's not your goal for your clinic then maybe change yeah I blame steve jobs oh steve <laughs> even, though, <laughs> even though he's not around to defend himself but why do you blame steve tyson oh no because steve jobs is one of those first people that was very casual when he got up on stage to speak he oh. had like he always wore the same shirt jeans yeah, you know, skate shoes and was very casual, but he was also a billionaire, so he could do whatever he wanted. Yeah, he's a genius. For the rest of us, and the thing is, he didn't care what people probably looked at because it wasn't what was important. It was the product he was producing. But for the rest of us who are in the the public eye, that's why I, like, I wouldn't get up on stage and talk without at least having a business shirt on. Mm-hmm. And when you saw me talk at that dental conference, I had a sports coat on. When I spoke in Liverpool, I had a sports coat on. You try and dress for the part especially if you're whether you're on stage uh, talking about business or you're in your clinic talking with your patient to me the whole professionalism is really important yeah it is a part that you play so we're not saying and particularly in this book it's not saying be yourself it's actually saying be yourself more however you need to be aware of you know Going back to my quote, love my quotes, perception is reality. (laughs) So if you can remember that, perception is reality. What people will look at you and perceive is their reality. So they, if you're wearing an untucked shirt, if your hair's messy, if you just, you come out in the waiting room, go, yep, come in, instead of actually greeting them nicely, the perception they have of you is not going to be what you probably want it to be. Even if you're the best clinician in the world you didn't portray yourself that way so in reality the patient's thinking that you're not that way if your clinic if the floor's not vacuumed and there's nail clippings everywhere when the patient walks in there's you know some chocolate wrappers on the the seats when the people walk in if you want a reputable clinic that's not what you're portraying so the reality is you don't have one so be Mm. really careful of of appearances be yourself but be mindful of what others can see yeah well it's no different to walking into mcdonald's on a busy saturday afternoon during say school holidays and the tables are messy and there's you know there's stuff spilt on the floor and you're not really expecting anything other than that it's mcdonald's it's a fast food (laughs) place it's for families and kids to just run amok in if you were going to a, a restaurant yeah, a five-star restaurant, fine dining, and you walked in there and there was food on the floor and mess all over the tables, you would probably turn around and walk straight back out again because that's not what you're expecting. So if your clinic is in a, a dingy area and you don't look after it and you've got worn-out carpet and seats and your, your receptionist has just come in from having a, a big you know, cigarette out the front and is reeking of tobacco, 
you're going to attract a certain patient. Now, better patients may walk in there the first time, but they will never come back no matter how good you are. So back to the book. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of things I just want to highlight before, because I'm just looking at the time as well. Is, and I've heard this before. You know they've heard, talked about you only need a thousand fans. Who said that? I, I, I don't mean, remember that. You, okay, well, it's in the book. It's on page 92. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, by the but, way, I have read the book. Mm. Yeah, but he refers yeah. to it. This was written in 2008 by Kevin Kelly. I didn't know who, where, where this was first mentioned. But anyway, he was talking about, I'd heard it numerous times where they were saying, you only need a thousand true fans to be successful. So if you look at your clinic and you think of your best patients, if you had a thousand of your best patients, you probably have no worries at all. Your clinic would be booming. So he was saying that the goal with anything is if you can get a thousand true fans, say for what I do, for example, if there was a thousand true fans listening to the podcast, then the downloads are always going to be every month are always going to be doing really well, which they are at the moment. So we might have a thousand fans on the podcast. Might have a thousand fans on the book review too. We don't know yet. Never know. Never know. Never know. But it's the same thing. So then if if I if you had true fans, then if you're going to run an event, people turn up to it. If you write another book, people buy the book. If you did a, a recording or something, people will listen to that recording. So there's a bit you're gonna only gonna start with a few to start with, but the goal is to just keep building up these true fans, just keep giving them quality information. So I'd actually keep giving quality treatment those true fans will tell other people that are similar to them and that over relates a period a of time. Yeah. You'll build it up. Yeah. The, the other book review we did for Jesse Cole's book fans first. That's it. That's the concept that, that we spoke about then, yeah. having fans instead of patients and the type of marketing that you do and how you portray yourself gives you, gives you those fans, the fans that you want, the people that you want. So just a couple of other things that I want to mention before we wrap up is when he's talking about critics. So no matter what you're doing in your business at the moment, you're doing any form of marketing or putting out any sort of work, there's going to be critics and all critics are right and all critics are wrong at exactly the same time. And he gives an example of writing a book. He said, how can a book get a five-star review from one person and a one-star review from the other person? It's the same book yet people can have completely different opinions about it. No different to mine. But the thing with it, they're both right. If, if the person who gave me one star read my book and truly believed that my book was shit, then my book was shit. Yeah. But the person who said, gave it five stars, it's the best book they've read, then they're, they're both right. So you've got to realize no matter what you do in your business, you're going to have critics. Could be a patient, it could be another podiatrist down the road. It's you just got to accept that it's going to happen. And it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It's just it's, that's their opinion. Yeah, totally, totally agree with you, Tyson. If this is the case with with all businesses, but if it's the fear of getting getting that critique from someone, if if that fear is actually stopping you from from going in the direction that you want to do or advertising a certain way or seeing patients a particular patient load that you want to see then um, whether you do or whether you don't the outcome is going to still be the same and what I mean by that is if you if you advertise people are going to have opinions on you no matter what so you may as well do what you want to do yeah because people are going to have an opinion anyway so it's you know you've just got to strive for the people that look through the same lens as you and they're out there. They're absolutely out there. You've just got to market yourself towards that that group of people in the right way, and you'll get you'll get them drinking your Kool Aid. That's what you want. Well, Kool Aid drinkers. Absolutely. And and that's and I think it's really important. No matter what you're doing, one you could be happy with what you're doing, but don't listen to what other podiatrists are saying to you. If they're mm -hmm. criticising you, listen to it, but don't. Doesn't mean that they're. Doesn't mean they're wrong doesn't mean they're right either. It's just because you, you will, as soon as you, um, yeah, in Australia, with tall poppy syndrome, as soon as you start rising, there's going to be people there who will take pot shots at you. Yeah. And, just, you and know, expect that, it. If, if expect you do, it. if you expect, if you come in with an expectation that that's going to happen, then it won't be such a shock to you. But do you know what? 
the it's those people that do that it's more on them so mm. those people actually have issue unresolved issues that they're trying to you know bring you down to their level and if you just keep hammering away and just keep doing what you're doing then and they'll eventually leave you and go on to someone else they're not going to change themselves so you can't worry about them because they don't want to change they think they're doing the right thing but they will leave you alone and go on to somebody else it's like those patients who come in and you know yell at the reception going oh blah 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 i'm not happy with this and anything that you do they're not happy with they leave your practice you feel bad but really when you think about it in reality they're going to go to someone else's practice and do exactly the same thing mm, so they're not true. happy anywhere that they go so don't take those criticism personally because it's got nothing to do with you but it's got everything to do with them that's true and i want to finish on two more things that i think are <laughs> important from the one is when he talks about your brand and your logo mm-hmm one, the, the promise is your brand. So people got to realize what everything about your business or everything that your business portrays is part of your actual brand. But your logo is not your brand, but your logo is an extension of your brand. And like we put it here, your logo is like a post-it reminder of that promise. Yeah. And I like that said, one. yeah, make what, what, what's really good here when he talks about uh, the brand is a shorthand for your customer's expectations. So when they see your business, there's a certain expectation. And he gives an example. Nike doesn't have a hotel. If it did, you would probably have some good guesses on what it would be like because that's Nike's brand. Yeah. See a picture if Nike actually yeah. said, opened up a motel, what do you think the motel would actually look like? There could be rehab equipment in every room. <laughs> <laughs> It comes with a pair of shoes instead of slippers. <laughs> and then he said, and then, but he said, so your logo really represents your brand. So as soon as people see your logo, they know what to expect. And he even says, if you think about it, write down, you know, list five logos, the, the, the first ones that come to mind, the ones that you think about. And he says, and his prediction is they probably represent brands that you admire. So you want to build a promise around your business. Your logo represents that promise. Every time they see your logo in your marketing, it reminds them. It's like a post-it note reminder of, oh, that's right. You know, I go to such and such, yeah, ABC Podiatry. That's my podiatry clinic. Yeah. And look, that's a really good, I think that's a really good point for people who want to expand their business or have their business in different locations if they want to hire more staff members yeah your logo promises a certain level of service then you have to provide that service whether it's because it's not you that's going to provide that service all the time as soon as you hire somebody they're actually going to deliver or try and deliver the same quality and level of service that your brand has so be really careful of expanding is just is just a word you've got to be willing to put in the effort so that whatever your brand and logo is that same quality of care is there yeah and i think that's a problem when podiatry businesses expand the biggest problem they always have is finding podiatrists and therefore they get desperate so their brand is saying one thing but they hire people just to fill a position and that yep. person can't live up to that expectation. And that's why you'll see there's you know, some podiatry companies around that have got clinics all over the place, but their quality of service that they provide, in my eyes, is substandard. Not yep. saying that the podiatrists at work there don't know what they're doing, but when I look at some of their clinics, I'm going, I, I couldn't work in a place like that because the quality of the work that they put out is not what I would do. I have higher expectations. And I think anyone who's looking to expand at the moment, if you cannot have a good supply of high quality podiatrists that live up to your brand, don't expand because it's just going to create headaches for you and, and it'll damage your brand. You've you got to dumb your brand down then. It'll damage your brand. You don't earn more just because you employ someone doesn't mean that your wage actually goes up. It just means your stress levels go up and you're probably going to work more to keep that, to keep your brand image until you get those people on board that, you know, are actually really good team members. 
Mm. But it's not saying it can't be done because I do know some podiatrists like in America and some in Australia who've got a number of clinics and they go really well and everybody that works there drinks the Kool-Aid. Yeah, that's, that's the important part. They're all drinking the Kool Aid, so therefore they all hold themselves to a to a higher standard. No, but it can absolutely yeah. easily be done, but you just have to remind yourself that your logo is is your brand. So you can't yeah. just stick it anywhere and not, you know. And this is the last thing. I'll, this is the last thing I want to finish on, and this is about pricing because I thought this was important. It says marketing changes your pricing, and pricing changes your marketing. Because people form assumptions and associations based on your pricing and your pricing shapes what people believe about your service. If you're the cheapest podiatrist in town, then you're going to attract a certain clientele, certain sort type of patient. If you're the most expensive podiatrist in town, people will be asking, I wonder why they're the most expensive. And therefore your brand has to reflect the pricing. And this is where the marketing affects pricing, pricing affects marketing. I thought that was a good point to finish on. Yeah. It is, and it comes up time and time again, doesn't it? Don't um, oh. you don't have to stick to a lower level to to get patients. There's patients want to see you and will pay for you. Yeah. So, Carly, have you got anything you'd like to to say before we wrap up? Uh probably the two two main points. If you're advertising anywhere, is that you know what's your Two, two things. My product is for people who believe in fill in the blank. So this is like a two fill in the blank one. So one, my product is for people who believe X about X. my business. And then I will focus on people who want blank X. space X. Yeah. Yep. So if you're focusing on your advertising, those who are with pen and paper, write those two things down. Those that are just listening, look at where we are at the podcast, go back to it, and then write them down. Uh, just every time you advertise in paper, every time you do social media, any type of signage, answer those two questions, and you'll get those type of people into your business. Basically, we both give the book a thumbs up, but it is, I, I recommend people get the audio book and listen to the audio book and then go and buy the hard copy book and listen to the audio book again with the hard copy book, because there's so much in the audio book. When I listened to it the first time, I'm thinking, I don't know where to start with taking notes, but when I listened to this one and then got my highlighter out and was highlighting pages, I took so much more away from it. So it's one of those books I yeah. can get both. Yeah. I think the audio suggestion is a great suggestion for this book. Cause it does sort of, and like I said, he talks slowly. So if you want to go through it slowly, it gives you ability to do that. But if you want to speed it up a bit. Yeah, just speed it up a bit. Mm. <laughs> One and a half times, <laughs> he sounds normal. <laughs> okay, Carly, I want to thank you for joining me for this week's episode. That was also this month's uh, book review. It has been fun and I look forward yeah, to been, doing the next one. It's been good. I hope everyone got something out of it that they didn't know before or maybe changed their mindset about the word marketing. Yeah, I hope so too. And yeah, definitely get the book. Now, before I finish up this particular episode, just want to remind everybody that I'm doing, previously, I've done the 12-week podiatry business reboot, over 12 weeks, one hour sessions online, but I'm doing it as a two-day live event in Brisbane on the 17th and 18th of November. All the details, you can either go to podiatrylegends.com or tysonfranklin.com, click on events and all the details are there. It is going to be fun. And yeah, so that's it for me this week. I want you to look after yourself, look after your family, and I will talk to you again next week. Adios. See you later. Bye. See ya.